All right. Again, thank you for being here. I hope uh, what I talk about tonight is a, a help and a blessing. Uh, it's something quick. It's something practical. Uh, but I'm going to try to put it in a different perspective, in a different way. But when we get done talking about it and going over it, you'll understand. Okay? If you want to go with me first uh, and turn to your Bible first, uh, let's see. I want you to go to Job chapter 6 and start there. Job chapter 6. Okay. Job chapter 6. It's in here somewhere. Huh? Where are you? Job chapter 6, okay? And we're going to start at verse 8. Most of us pretty much know what this verse is saying. But before I start this Bible reading and start this, I'm a, I have entitled tonight's lesson, and it's called, Do Your Request Right. There is a right way and a wrong way, okay? Okay? A lot of people and a lot of Christians sit here and we think that when we go to the Lord and request or ask something that we're going to be granted it or it's going to be given to us, okay? But it depends on how you do it and the way you do it and how you ask it. Because if you don't do it right, I promise you, God will hear it, but I promise you, it will be denied and it will keep coming back denied because you're not doing it right. Last time I spoke, I talked to you about who was at the helm. You or God. I, and I told you I was in the Navy. I'm starting the tonight's message out again with something we did in the service and it'll set the foundation and the background for what we're talking about tonight, okay? In the service, when you wanted to go somewhere or you needed some kind of supply or you decided that you wanted to take leave, you had to put in what was called a request chit, okay? This had to be filled out in triplicate, okay? So you say, why triplicate? Because one, per, one goes to you, one goes to your CO, and one goes to the CO of the base. If you don't have those two signatures, your CO and the uh, CO of the base, the signature on that request chit, it will get thrown back to you as request denied. Okay? So as you're filling this out, it has different lines and different things that you're supposed to put on this request chit, okay? And you have to do it right. You can't fill it out in pencil. It will get thrown back to you. You can't do it in crayon. You can't do it in marker. It has to be done in black pen, in black pen only. If you did it in blue pen, they would reject it. I know it sounds crazy, but the Navy, the service, that's what they want. Decent and in order, just like our church runs. Decent and in order. Step-by-step -step process. So when you say, I want to go home, I want to take two weeks vacation, okay? Just like on your job sometimes, you are given so much vacation time a year. Be it two weeks, be it four weeks, however it works for your job. But when you put in that request, you had to do it, your name, your address, where you were headed, how much time you were asking for. You had to give them the whole thing, as in I'm starting at point A, and I'm going to point B. I'm going to be there this long, and I'm going to come back from point B back to point A but it had to have all the directions, okay? It had to, hey, are you flying? Are you driving? 
how are you doing this? I mean, it had to have everything on this request and it had to be put in the right spots and it had to be legible. All your I's had to be dotted. All your T's had to be crossed, okay? And everything had to be put down there correctly. If not, it would get rejected. It could get rejected for not crossing a T. I know that's crazy, but it could be, okay? If you didn't put your signature at the bottom, you spelled it instead of wrote it out, you know, put it in cursive. It could get rejected, okay? If they looked up your directions and found out, hey, wait a second, there's a, an easier way to go to your destination, they could reject and say, do it over, put these directions on there, okay? It's just like in the Christian life. When you sit down and you're getting ready to communicate to God, okay, take some time. Sit down, take a piece of paper. It's okay. You don't have to just jump right into your prayer. You don't have to just jump right into your request, your want, your needs, your desire, okay? Take a little time. Get a piece of paper out and figure out exactly in what order you want to put in your request to God. Okay, we all talk about Jesus, we talk about others, and then we talk about you, the word joy, okay? And that's okay. And that's a pretty good step to follow, okay? Praise Jesus, okay, but... Sometimes people don't have time to sit down and just praise Jesus for 20 minutes, okay? You should, but you don't have to. I'm saying there's our correct steps to follow when you want your request and you want it answered according to God's word, to God's purpose, and God's plan for your life. If you don't follow it, you'll be wondering how come it didn't get answered. Or you might say, well, why did it get rejected? Or why did God say no? Okay. It might be a few things that we're going to try to talk about and get across tonight. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to read Job chapter six, verse eight and verse eight only. Okay. In Job chapter six, in verse eight, it says, Oh, that I might have my request and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. I want you to see the last three words. I long for. He says that God would grant me the thing that I long for. I don't know what everybody's request or what everybody's biggest thing is that they're longing for, okay? It can be different for the Pohazis. It can be different for the Facklers. It can be different for Mrs. Jackson and Mrs. White and the Van Zulens and the Van Burens, okay? Everybody has something in their mind or in their heart that they really yearn for, that they're really longing for, that they really need, okay? But if you don't go and ask it the right way or put it in the right way, using God's words, using God's promises, okay? When you're putting in a request to God at your, your prayer and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I want you fill in the blank, okay? That's kind of shallow. That's kind of, you know... Hey, all right, but if you think about using God's words, using his promises, and standing on his promises, because we know that God says we're supposed to come boldly to the throne, okay? We're not supposed to come to the throne and be shy and be timid when we're praying to our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is open to us every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We don't have to sit there and make an appointment. 
We don't have to sit there and say that I'm going to this destination or I'm going in this direction or I'm going to do this thing. We can go directly to our Heavenly Father anytime, any place, anyhow. And as long as we sit there and know that we can go there and we can go boldly, you know, and we can go to the foot of the, our Heavenly Father and we can talk to Him as if I'm talking to you one-on-one. When I, when I have prayer time and I'm off by myself, I have an imaginary chair next to me. And that's where I sit there and I look at that chair and on that chair, I say to myself, this is my heavenly father. What do I want to say to him? What do I want to ask him? How am I going to approach him? How am I going to put into words what it is that I want to ask him as a request, as a want, as a need, or as a desire? But if I just go to him and I sit down and just say, good morning, Heavenly Father, how are you? I'm glad you're having a good day. Uh, I thank you for everything that you've done. Amen. Whoop-dee-doo. To me, that's not doing any kind of praying. That's not doing anything for you. You just had a short little conversation when you knew that you were longing for something. You wanted it. You needed it. It was on your mind. It was on your heart. It was a desire. But you chickened out. You decided, hey, oh no, the Lord's not listening to me. The Lord don't want nothing to hear from me. He don't want to answer my prayer. Yes, he does. But if you don't go and seek and knock and ask and says right here, long for. Job chapter 6, verse 8 says, at the very end, I, I, not you, not you, I, me personally, long for. You get what I'm saying? Job said, hey, I can't, I can't, I go to my heavenly father and I have something on my mind, on my heart, and I long for it. And I'm putting in a request, and I want to have it answered. I don't want a yes, I don't, or I don't want to no, I don't want a maybe, or shoulda, or coulda, or, or might be. I want a definite yes, or a definite no, and I want to know why. The why comes from getting into the Word of God. And going through the Word of God and understanding why God said, no, you can't have that right now. It's not in your life's plan or your will for your life right now. It might be later on. It may be down the road. Come back and ask me later. But keep asking. So that says, I long for Next place I want to go to is Psalm, excuse me, is Psalms 21, verse 2. Psalms 21, verse 2. We're talking about do your request right tonight. When you're going to your clerk for your prayer closet or you're taking time out for prayer, I don't know when you do your prayer, if it's in the morning, if it's in the afternoon, if it's in the evening, whenever you have it, and you know that you've taken time to write some things down that you want to talk to your Heavenly Father about, as long as I said, as long as it is something that you long for, something that you desire, something you really need to have God answer, if you put it down in the correct order, in the correct manner, and use it, use God's Word, excuse me, use God's Word, use His promises, when you're putting your request down and you're writing it down, it's going to help you a whole lot. It's going to be able to open up your mind. It's going to be able to open up your soul. It's going to be able to open up your heart. And you're going to be able to communicate better 
than you've ever communicated with your heavenly father than going there with a closed mind, with a closed heart, and only ask the simple little things that we already know God's going to take care of anyway. See what I'm getting at? All right, excuse me. Psalm 21, verse 2. It says, Thou hast given, giveth him his heart's desire, and has not withholden the request of his lips. Selah. That word selah means to look at it again, think about it. It says, Thou hast given him his heart's desire. Didn't say his mind's desire or his soul's desire. It says he gave him his heart because he opened up, when he opened up his mind and he opened up his heart and he used God's word and he used it in the right way and he stood on the promises that God said, when you are talking to me and you're wanting to use me and follow me and you want the blessings from me, hey, if I write down, all the promises of all the different of the one thing that I long for, if I write down every promise that's in God's word that says I long for, and I put it out there, God has to do something. He either has to answer it or go against his word or go against his promise. And we know God's not going to go against his word. We know God's not going to go against his promises. Because if he did it for Job, you know he's going to do it for us. If he did it for, for James and John and everybody else, as long as we do it according to his word, because he says, I will magnify my word above my name. So he said, hey, you have something and you're longing for it and you want the desire of your heart? He says, has not withholden the request of his lips. Okay? So not one was you long for. Okay? Job longed for something. It doesn't have to always be when you're making a request that you're putting down five, six, seven different things. It can be just one thing. One thing. That you really honestly know that you need and that you want it now, and you need an answer now. Like I said, sit down, write it out, think it out. Use God's word. Use God's promises. And then go boldly to the throne of the grace of God and say, Heavenly Father, you fill in the blank. I don't know what it is that you're longing for or you're asking for. But here's what you said in your, in your words. Here's what you said that the promises were that I'm standing on and that I'm telling you according to your words and according to your, your purpose, you said that if you did it for them, I know you'll do it for me. Okay? Last place that we're going to go to tonight is Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. <clears throat> Matthew, or I'm sorry, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Okay? Now, like I said, we want to have our prayers answered. We want to have our request, but we need to do them right. Okay, the first thing that we saw in Job was the last three words. In the next verse that we read in Psalms 21, verse 2, okay, we saw that, that it was the desire of your heart, not my heart, your heart, coming from your lips. Okay, now, I'm, not, I'm not making you pray. I'm not making your lips move. I don't know your heart. God knows your heart. So, last one, Mark 11, verse 24, and it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things 
whatsoever you desire. There's that word desire. When you pray, believe. There's a key word right there. Believe that you, that ye received them, and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. Oh, that's pretty serious right there. So he's saying, look, I can give you what you long for. I can give you your request, okay? I can give you the desire of your heart that you speak out of your own lips. But he says, "Standing, stand and pray. Forgive if you have ought against any. We all know what ought is, right? When you have something bad against somebody. So that means your conduit between your heart and your and your heavenly father might be clogged because you have a grievance against Drew or Miss White. You have something clogging the drain, if you will. So yes, you're speaking, that's true. You're talking, that's true. But when something is clogged, Right? It's hard to get through, isn't it? So before you put your request or your prayer to God for whatever it is that you're longing for or your heart's desire or your need or your want, you have to ask yourself, do I have any ought against my brothers? Is there anything in the way? Is there anything clogging this communication line? Is it flowing freely? Do I have anything that I need to get right before God will answer my request? <clears throat> Let's move on. And then it says, ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will the Father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. That is one thing I just wanted to bring to your attention that yes, we all have prayer lives. Yes, we all sit and talk to our Heavenly Father 24-7, okay? And we can do that anytime, anyplace, anywhere. You can do it in your car. You, I talk to the Lord sitting at my desk at work over and over. Different things just pop into my brain. Okay, Lord, let's talk about this. I may be doing my job, screwing nuts, turning bolts, taking tires off, but my mind and my heart are communicating with God. Nobody knows that. But God does. I do. And I thank the Holy Spirit that sometimes when I am sitting there, that he does bring up certain things that I need to clear up with God, that I need to go and take care of. Or I need to come to somebody and say, hey, I think I said something wrong to you. Or, hey, I think I did something I shouldn't have done. Please forgive me. And then I know once my heart is clear and I know that my mind is clear and I'm right with you, then I, I ought to be able to be right with God, right? So that makes the, the conduit and it makes it easier for my request to get to God that I'm longing for, okay? That I'm desiring, that I'm using my own lips to say, hey, I don't have aught with anybody. I think I have asked for forgiveness, for, okay? And now I can go and say, okay, Lord, I'm coming boldly. My heart is pure. My mind is pure. I'm right with my fellow man, my fellow Christians. So I'm laying it out and, and lay it out. One, two, three, whatever it is, but using his words, using his promises so he can't, he can't come back and say, 
I didn't hear you. So tonight I'm asking you, do you have a prayer request? Do you have a request? Do you have something that you long for? And you say, God hasn't given me an answer. It might be because there's something in that conduit clogging that request. Is it something that you did to somebody here or at work? It doesn't have to be just a fellow Christian that you did something wrong to. It could have been somebody as easy at work that you got mad at, that you got angry at, and you might have slipped something out that was bad and it was taken wrongly. We've all done that before. Where, hey, we didn't mean to say it, we didn't mean to do it, but it happened because we let our, let our anger and our tongue get the better of us. We're human beings, but get it right. So, number one, what is it that you're longing for? Just like Job said, number one, use, take some time, Put down that request in the right sequence and say, is there anything I have that I've done wrong, that I have ought against? And if there is, get it right. Is there, what is it that I long for or I want? What is my desire? Is my mind clear? Is my heart clear? Is my soul ready to go and stand before God Almighty and boldly tell him, according to your word, according to your promises, here's what's on my mind, here's what my request is, here's what I'm asking for. You already know that I need it. You already know my thoughts. And wait for an answer. Don't wait on a shoulda, coulda, woulda, maybe. You wait on a yes, <laughs> or no. If it's no, then try to figure out why your request got denied. Just like in the service, when I filled out that request sheet, why did it get denied? Why didn't they A-okay it? What did I do wrong? What didn't I fill out right? It's the same thing with your prayer life. What did I do wrong? What didn't I put down right? What's causing me not to get the answer I'm looking for? And then, once you have figured that out, go back, straighten it out, clean it up, erase it, do whatever you got to do, and then resubmit it. And I think, I think if you follow these simple little steps, I need to have no ought in my heart, I have to have no animosity towards anybody. I need to have things written down according to God's word, according to his promises that I can use, that I long for, that is on my heart's desire, and get the outcome I'm looking for. So what's your request tonight? Or is there a hang-up causing you not to get that request? Let's pray. Dear Lord, many of us Christians in here are salty Christians. We understand prayer. We understand the, that prayer is very important in a Christian's life. We understand that when we come to you, that you are listening. You want to give us the desires of our heart. We don't want to come to you and not to be able to speak clearly to you. We need to realize that all we have to do, just like a child when he comes to his father here on earth, that child opens up his mouth and says, hey, dad, I need. And dad says, okay, or dad says, no. The same thing when a Christian comes to you in their prayer closet 
or when they're communicating to you that their mind needs to be cleared, their heart needs to be open, and they need to know that they have followed the easy steps, as in making sure they have no ought with their brother or their sister. And then to use your words and to use your promises and to come to you boldly and know that you will give them an answer according to your purpose and their will and their life. If it's no, it's no. If it's yes, wonderful. We thank you for all the many blessings. We thank you for all the many things that you've done. We thank you for all the many things that you're going to continue to do. Now give us all a good night tonight. Bring us all back here safely for Saturday soul winning and on Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, amen.